hey, some of you know that last year I was involved with some climate action work, some climate resistance work in Sydney, and that I got caught up with the law, with the criminal justice system. Um, I really do care about what's going on with the planet and what the terrible potential in the next period is, given uh, the, uh, the, the global heating that's going on. And this is why I get involved. And, you know, those of you who know me know that I've been involved for a long time doing social change work um, and using nonviolence as my methodology. I went down to be part of a mobilisation. Um, it was a call out from some people that call themselves Blockade Australia. And there was a public call out for people to join them to really um, make a show that we were very concerned about what was going on and the lack of action, uh, the consistent inaction by the government over a long period of time and by the major institutions. And I got involved, as I've always done, as a punter, as a participant, um, but to play a role, if I could find a role for myself. So the people had been organising, they did a, a public call-out. There's a lot of people came from different states for the public call-out. It's not an unusual way for us to organise. Um, I've been involved with those sorts of marches and rallies before and I've, and since, actually. In fact, I was at a huge rally uh, that they ran for the school strike in about 2017-18 in Sydney. Thousands of people. I have no idea who organised that. And But again, it was a response to a public call-out. Um, this one, things went a bit differently, right? Because... This crew have been quite effective in their work, and so the government have been watching the police. They'd given, they'd arranged for a police task force uh, called Strike Force Guard. Turns out to be in the background and be starting to sort of control and surveil what's going on. So after the the march, the police started snatching people off the street and arresting them in an ordinary march. Some people I know were bundled away, including people who were. Uh, legal observers, witnesses to what was going on, people recording what was happening. But they didn't pick me up at the rally at all. So um, I'd actually left the road when requested by police. So that's one reason they didn't pick me up. Um, but in fact, they picked me up the next day um, when I was in town again and I was approached at a bus stop and I'd got on a bus and I was suddenly surrounded by police, a young detective in ordinary clothes, um, undercover, basically, who asked me to get off the bus. And immediately other detectives appeared who were part of this strike force guard. So they had been surveilling that bus stop, looking for me and presumably other people, but it seemed to me that they were looking for me. And then I was put in a watch house. When I got to the watch house, there were already a number of us there, people who had been picked off the streets earlier in the day. Um, and we were there for more than 30 hours in the watch house. First of all, in a small cage and then in a larger cage, a small glass cage and then a larger cage. We were refused bail. Um, so uh, usually you're, um, you're charged and let go and told, given a court date. That's called... Um, you sign and say, yes, I'm going to come back to court. But we refused bail. So we were bundled in front of the first available magistrate in Sydney the next day. Um, now, I have never been refused bail in 30 years of being a nonviolent activist, um, not, not in any action I've been part of. And so it was very strange to have the police refuse bail, especially since I had not been picked up at the action but at a bus stop. Um, and I've never ad not attended court either, incidentally. So in all the bail situations I've had, I've been, um, <laughs> I've invited to come back to court and I've come back to court and I've used the court to tell the story of what happened. But then I also discovered I'd been uh, charged with a new charge, uh, blocking the Sydney Harbour Bridge, Section 144, we're calling it, or blocking, blocking a ramp or a road in the lead up to the bridge. Uh, it's the same charge our friends, uh, Violet Coco and a couple of others, um, have been charged with. It includes a two-year jail term. It's a new charge. But it seems that the new charge is a high-level charge 
and one of the benefits for the police of it being a higher a higher level charge is that they can um, put more bail conditions on. So we hadn't actually been near the bridge. Uh, I'm not from Sydney. As I said, I just joined the march and I was following who was in front of me. Um, and we were definitely on the streets of Sydney marching. But I'm not sure where I was in relationship to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, nor in relationship to the roads around Sydney. I couldn't even tell you where I was. I could, if I went back, I might see a few things I knew. Um, because that's the point, right, is to be on the streets marching, to make a statement about uh, what's going on, to disrupt, perhaps, the ordinary business of the day, to get together and say we're not happy with this total inaction on climate change. So our direction and our theme was to challenge uh, Australians, uh, to challenge the people of Sydney. Blockade Australia had made the call out and we wanted to know why is Australia still blocking climate action? And at that stage, um, even before the new government, uh, oh no, we had the new government, but we were still very, very slow on, on, on change. And as you know, there's been very, very little change on climate, even with the new government. We care about the planet. We care about the people of Lismore, Western Sydney even, who'd, who'd, who'd experienced devastating fires. So I'm refused bail, and I'm in the watch house, and we're put in front of the magistrate the next day. We stay overnight in the cells, then into court. But the magistrate gives us, the magistrate gives us bail, but imposes what they call conditions conditions to the bail. So we will let you go, Miss Pistorius, but only if you agree to this, this and this. These are the conditions of your release. Otherwise, we'd keep you in jail for 10 months up until when your court case is, if you don't agree to the bail. So they've got a list of conditions and um, one of the, <laughs> they've got a list of people and on, 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 on the list is a list of people and I'm not allowed to associate I'm not permitted to associate with more than 30 people. There's 30 people on this list. In the court, they inferred it was going to be 15, but when I got to sign it, I got to see there was more than 30 people. Um, I knew they had a list because I knew I had been on other people's lists, which was extraordinary because I had been in Queensland and not, you know, <laughs> not there when I appeared on these New South Wales lists. So there I was in court. I'd been to a march. I'd been picked up the next day at a bus stop, and I'm given these conditions. I can't talk to my friends. Some people I care deeply about and who deeply care about me, people who are the most courageous and excellent people on the planet. Um, some of the people I don't even know. I'm not allowed to talk to them either, and I'm not sure how I would know that who they were. I'm not allowed to have encrypted apps. These are sort of texting applications that people use now to communicate so that the police can't follow the communications. They're private communications. They're called encrypted apps. So I can only use texting, presumably, so the police can follow what I'm texting and who I text. So any of you who have texted me on normal texting, you can know that your number is probably with the, the New South Wales police. Um, I have to give them a password. If they ask, so they can see if I've, if I'm obeying, um, uh, to see see if I've done what they've demanded, or if I don't give them the password, they can incarcerate me, or if they find apps on my phone that I'm not supposed to have, they can incarcerate me, and I'm only allowed to have one phone. Um, if I have two, they can incarcerate me immediately. They can take me, arrest me immediately, um, and we know this because. Um, it's happened to someone. If I speak to any of my friends, um, if I like their posts on Facebook, they can incarcerate me immediately. Put me straight back in the watch house. Put me straight back in the prison. Uh, they can find me and imprison me. There. They have done this. They have done this to someone. They did it to one person twice, believe it or not. So um, the last condition they gave me was you must leave New South Wales in 72 hours and stay at the nominated address 
sort of indefinitely until the court case comes around. Right, so that's the last condition. Get out of New South Wales and, and don't come back to the city centre. But of course, because it's New South Wales and their criminal justice system is a shambles, the matters are, um, uh, the court case doesn't come around. The matters are controlled by the police. The police have to agree to a date. It's another 10 months before I get a court case, 10 months before a trial. So right now I'm eight months in, and this is where you'll come in. I want you to stay close with me and watching this story. Um, I'm looking at varying those conditions and uh, this Wednesday, and then maybe challenging them in the Supreme Court, because actually they stopped me from doing basic citizen organising, um, civic politics. That's what I do. Uh, community organising, community work. I'm a social worker. I help people think things through. I think I help people think and make sense of the society they live in and find how they're going to contribute. Um, I, I want a society in which people are educated and thoughtful about what they do. But I am not allowed to communicate with people, basically. Uh, I care about my community. I care about the planet deeply. Um, uh, but I can't use Signal or WhatsApp to communicate with people, I run the risk of being incarcerated, uh, picked up by the New South Wales Police at any time and incarcerated, especially if I am in New South Wales. So uh, I'm going to try and vary those conditions on Wednesday. I want you to keep an eye out for that. It's International Women's Day. I'm hoping I come across a good woman, magistrate, an intellectual magistrate who understands the law and understands the role of civil disobedience and protest in the law. Um, if lawyers don't fight, fight back, what we found is that the whole value base shifts. I don't know if it shifts to the right or the left, but it shifts. Um, and what's normal procedure shifts. And after a bit, if it becomes sort of normal to lock up protesters right away and refuse bail right away. That seems to be where we're heading. This seems to be what the New South Wales police want. And you have to remember, the New South Wales have police have been one of the most corrupt police forces in this country. Really, very corrupt. And you've seen with Friendly Geordies, the sort of behaviour. that There's so many of them have got nothing to do. They're following up on YouTubers and non-violent activists like myself. So our situation, um, we're hoping we get a good magistrate, a bit like Cherish did last week, um, and our situation is different from hers. You might have followed that case, a young woman who'd been arrested in the middle of the night for being at a protest. Um, but our situation is a bit different because I'm facing magistrates' bail and they were facing police bail, and um, magistrates don't mind so much overturning police bail, but that magistrate did speak well and we can use that discourse. But uh, for me, the magistrates can't overturn another magistrate, but they can vary. It's a, it's a difference. Because the Bail Act, um, we're, going to ask the, the, we're going to ask the magistrate to remove all the conditions because the Bail Act is not supposed to be used by the police for, for policing, and that's what they're using it for, policing and control. And the conditions, don't, the conditions we have don't actually address any bail concerns because... There are no bail concerns concerning me. Um, they were an ambit claim that was won by the supercharged task force, strike force guard, um, which had a pile of money thrown at them and had to be showing they had outcome, outcomes. Um, and their main strategy is lazy policing, which is just to give everything a lag, make everything slow, tie us up, tie our lawyers up, put everybody off for as long as possible. It's just, um, it's effective though. It's, it's lazy, but effective. But the Bail Act is not supposed to be used for that. It's not supposed to be a policing instrument. The Bail Act is supposed to be to keep the in integrity of the court system or the court case. To make sure I return to court, uh, you know, that I don't sort of beat up the witnesses or harass them or interfere with the crime scene. Um, 
that's what the bail act is for you know and i can assure you i'm cooperating with returning back to court um i'm interested in court as a space a political space so the conditions don't actually address any sort of bail conditions they just generally sort of control me as an ordinary citizen when i actually think that's what the law is for right that's why we have a law you don't use the bail act and in fact i'm agreed with by uh, a supreme court judge in in melbourne in 1994 who said this as much about a, a protest situation sim very similar situation so i hope you this is where you come in come in you keep an eye out uh for next wednesday and follow up and see what the outcome is and follow up the other cases too because i'm not the only one um, with bail and with these bridge charges there are two trials this week and and the resentencing of violet coco um, and i have in la later in april i have to run uh, a court case to run a trial um, and i'll be running that i <laughs> had a right to be at a public march um, that there was an open invitation for and that i wasn't blocking anything they'd know if I was blocking something because I have blocked things before. I'm very explicit when I'm blocking things. And in this case, in fact, I was nowhere near the Harbour Bridge that I moved off the road when I was asked to move off the road by a police officer. Um, and it's it's not up to the, the police to say when we do or don't do citizen politics. We can notify them to be helpful to them or we can do citizen politics without their assistance if we want to. Uh, but it's not up to them to interrupt uh, peaceful assembly. Um, we have a right of, of freedom of communication and peaceful assembly without involvement of police. And if the police or the magistrates imp tries to impose um, bail conditions on you, just if you're one of those people that they might be imposing bail conditions on, seriously think about uh, refusing to sign them, at least in the initial period, because the New South Wales government and its policing system is terrible. It's just terrible. And they are pushing to move the value base and the practices uh, for more and more of police control. And we need to find ways of resisting that. So I'm looking forward to having you with me. Um, yeah, stay in touch. Bye.